Hi, I'm Ali Shesova, and in this video we're going to talk about measuring the voltage loop of a PFC power stage. Now, for uh, many of the appliances, due to the regulations, we must have a power factor correction unit, that's the PFC, which always uh, feeds a downstream converter or a second stage converter. Um, so please note that when you try to measure the loop, uh, you must always make sure that you have got a constant power load, uh, otherwise you will not get the correct result. A purely resistive load may not give you the correct result here. Also please note that we are dealing with high voltages here. We start with a line voltage uh, in Europe, that will be 230 volts RMS. Then it's rectified, so this is the rectified sine wave going into the PFC. And the output of the PFC is typically around 385 or 400 volts. So please uh, be aware of the dangers associated with using the high voltages. A power factor correction unit that we're going to measure, it's one of the most popular ones uh, that is around, and that is a continuous conduction mode boost converter. And it's being running, it, it will run in average current mode. So we have two loops, we've got a voltage loop and we've got a current loop. And in this video we're going to be measuring the voltage loop. Now please note that the voltage loop is very very slow. Typically the crossover of the voltage loop is about let's say 5 to 10 Hertz. And in order to measure it, We have a measurement set up that looks like this. Uh, so inside of your power factor correction IC, you have got a error amplifier. This is the voltage error amplifier. Uh, and that is tied to the uh, input of this is tied to the output of the uh, PFC stage, which is, as I said, around 400 volts. So we put an injection resistor right up here. Uh, and then we use the body 100 in order to inject a, uh, a signal. And then we measure the voltage loop. Uh, for measuring the voltage loop, you actually do not need to do anything to the input uh, voltage. So you can use it just as you would do on the bench with a sinusoidal input voltage. This is not the case with current loop. Um, and um, because you're looking at a very low crossover frequency, you need an injection transformer that has got the ability to give you a good signal integrity and good signal at very, very low frequencies. So let's look at the test setup. First of all, uh, please note that you're dealing with very high voltages here and things are dangerous. But however, what I have done in this particular case is I have uh, scaled everything down by a factor of 10. So I have changed the potential dividers on this PFC stage here in order to fool it to think that it's receiving 230 volts whilst in fact it is receiving 23 volts. Uh, so 23 volts AC is coming through here, it's getting rectified and that is going to the PFC stage which is then feeding a load which is constant power. If you remember from earlier, it is very important for loop measurement that we make sure we don't use a uh, resistive load but a constant power load. And then over here I have got an injection resistor which is what we showed on the board earlier on and that is connected to uh, the uh, safety probes which is connected to the body 100. Um, again, the safety probes are there to protect the uh, operator and the instrument and same with an injection transformer. Uh, this is a uh, BLFT100 uh, injection transformer which is especially designed for measuring very low frequencies. And uh, note that uh, it is quite big and heavy and that is because uh, we are trying to inject very, very low frequencies. Um, it also provides uh, protection uh, for the instrument and the operator and it does not saturate at such low frequencies. Okay, so um, finally uh, we're going to look at various waveforms on the uh, oscilloscope. I am measuring the, uh, um, the current in the inductor and I am also going to measure the voltage and then when we go to the computer I'm going to turn the PFC stage on and off and you can see how the current in particular changes shape with and without PFC. What we are looking at now is uh, Breacher PLD. Breacher PLD is a piece of software that uh, everybody who attends our PFC workshops uses to design uh, control loops for PFC. And then of course, everybody does lots of hands-on lab on our safe low voltage uh, PFCs. But you can see here that in fact we are designing for universal voltage um, 
instead of the low voltage that we use in the class. Uh, I'm looking at the body plot, the simulated body plot of uh, the voltage loop, and you can see that uh, what, the, what PLD has designed is fitting with the stability criteria quite beautifully. It shallows the gain, it crosses at 7 hertz exactly where I want it, and at 7 hertz I've got a phase margin of 45 degrees, which is what I wanted to design. So, let's have a look at what the body is measuring. If I look at the body, you can see the classic look. Note that the measurement is uh, quite slow because obviously we are, in, we are injecting very slow, um, uh, low frequency signals. And you can see here that the crossover frequency is 7.92 hertz with a phase margin of 46 degrees. The shape is almost exactly the same as what you see in the PLD. Uh, the one that we were using on the PLD, I, may, um, I repeat, is slightly different, mainly because that is using universal voltages and here we have divided everything by a factor of 10. Uh, a classic look for measuring the voltage loop for a PSC is this bump that you see and you can see that it's happening at 100 hertz. That is twice the line frequency. Now, if you remember earlier on, we rectified the line frequency. We are in Europe, so line frequency is 50 hertz, and therefore we are getting some noise at 100 hertz, but it's way under minus 20 dBs, around minus 20 dBs. And what, what we are really interested is actually here, which is our crossover frequency and the phase margin of the voltage loop, which is fitting beautifully with what the theory says. Uh, finally, let's have a look at the transient, uh, let's have a look at some of the waveforms on the oscilloscope. So if I go to my scope, uh, I need to disconnect body so that the injection signal does not corrupt. There we go. Now, uh, the yellow trace is the uh, reference rectified voltage waveform and the uh, um, green trace is the current that I'm measuring. So first I'm going to turn off the PFC and you'll see immediately that you get the classic sharp rise of the current and this is what the regulation is all about. Nobody likes these sharp peak, uh, peaks and that's why we have to use PFC. As soon as I turn the PFC back on, you can see that the input current becomes a beautiful um, sine wave. The crop top here that you see is actually because of the line voltage waveform, uh, which, is, which is usually flattened a little bit due to the impedance of the, of the source. I can, let me bring that up. Let me turn this off. Oops. There we go. And let me increase the scale. And let me also widen it. You can see that around zero, you've got certain amount of zero crossing, and then there is another little bit of a hump. Uh, and this is obviously where the diodes are stopped conducting, exactly around zero. And here is, uh, I would guess that it's uh, where the uh, boost converter is going from discontinuous conduction mode to continuous conduction mode. Uh, if I go back again, you'll see that actually it's a very nice and beautiful waveform.